Chapter 7. The Holy Spirit. H. The Spirit rules and governs. First Bible lesson, John chapter 3 verse 6. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Second Bible lesson, Luke chapter 1 verse 17. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Golden text, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 45. And so it is written, the first man Adam was made a living soul, the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. What I intend to reveal unto you is not directly related to what you have read. We want to use those texts for our revelation. I had told you that we are spirits. All human beings, fishes, trees are spirits. God himself is a spirit. On this note, if you weed a certain portion of land, in not quite two weeks, the place will be covered again with weeds. If you clear the bush, cutting down many big trees, after a time, the whole forest regenerates. We do not intend to take you far but would wish to deal on that which is born of the flesh and that which is born of the spirit. Somebody may argue that he has no spirit, even though you insist that he has. How many spirits are there? There is the terrestrial spirit and the celestial spirit. There is the spirit of Adam and the spirit of Christ. The spirit of Adam was from the earth and the last Adam was a quickening spirit. What is born of the flesh is the spirit of Adam. All of us are spirits. If you have the spirit of Adam, you will know it yourself. If you visit somebody's house and you are instructed to enter all other places, except one, if you do not enter the one prohibited you will not want to go. Even if you are given a big well-furnished room in a house, with a car and ship at your service, and instructed to keep the keys to many other rooms, but advised not to enter one, even though you have everything at your disposal, your one and only thought will be about what is in the prohibited room. Your thought will be so focused on the room that, if you do not open the door to pry into a lot makes up the room, you will not want to go. That is the spirit of Adam. Let the person promise you eternal life. If you do not enter that room, you will still enter the room without which you will not agree. When you open the door and behold the room, you will start regretting what had been so inspiring about it after all. The regrets of how you have lost your position will come too late. The scriptures tell us that there are celestial spirits. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 40. You are born with it. Wherever a child touches down on the ground, he is born with the spirit of either Adam or the other, else why does a man or a woman have the same behavioral pattern? When you are married the very thing you instruct your wife against, is what she will do. The house you tell her not to enter is, where she will strive to enter. Do not instruct your wife not to enter a particular house, because she will never be satisfied, if she does not enter that person's house. Why do children insist on doing what they are instructed not to do? Is it not due to that same spirit of Adam? If you do not know the source of the spirit, I am going to tell you. The first man, was of the earth. He was made out of the earth and that spirit was breathed into him. At first, Adam lived alone but afterwards complained of loneliness. He asked God for a companion. Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. This sermon will also expose how deaths bring about births and births deaths. Without deaths, there are no births. You will realize that nothing takes God by surprise. There is no chance happening. There had been a set order right from the beginning through which everything follows. All things work according to his divine will. There is no mistake in him. If the chance should reoccur to start the world all over again, the world would start, as it did, without which there is no other way. You travel to Lagos to purchase a certain yam species which you intend not only to retain but to multiply. To multiply the yam, you have to divide it into planting parts of, say, two or three. During harvest, the two or three yam stands will further multiply itself into new yam tubers. You may end up with up to six yam tubers. Because you want it to further multiply, you prepare yet another place and plant the harvested tubers. This may give about 12 to 15 stands. During harvest, you may have up to 20 to 30 yam tubers. Remember, that you had originally one yam point if by the time you returned from Lagos you did not plant it, it would have abided alone even for the duration of thousands and millions of years. This was what transpired between God and the first man. Your prayer is true, when you say, even, as the earth is not without particles, so is man not without sin. You are earthly and the spirit which is in you is of the earth. 
Therefore, even as the earth is not without particles, so are you not without sin. It explains why no good thing comes from the Adamic spirit. Do you know that when Adam was alone in the garden, there was no way through which God's spirit could permeate into Adam? It goes to confirm that if our Lord Jesus Christ had not died while on earth, he would have abided alone. He would not have had multiplicities of spirits. That is why he said, except a corn of wheat fall onto the ground and dies, it abideth alone, John chapter 12 verse 24, but if it dies, it bringeth forth much fruit. His death for three days made him a multiplicity of spirits abounding in the entire world. Can you now see how we come about the heavenly man, God coming down to dwell with us on earth? Similarly, when Adam was alone, if he did not die he would have abided alone without the companion he requested. Deep sleep refers to a kind of death which God subjected him to. It was during the deep sleep that Adam became a spirit. The result became the Adamic spirit. If it were not so from where would we have had Cain, Abel and all the children? Because of this, right from that time, the moment one dies, he becomes a spirit. If just one building is demolished, the spirit will multiply throughout the whole earth, and thousands of women will become pregnant. That is to say, as people die, so do we have multiplicities of spirits. If you examine carefully, you will discern that the spirit which comes from this earth, the Adamic spirit, seeks for money, wife. It is carnally minded and is lustful. There is no good thing about it. That is why, no matter how well you preach to such spirit, it will still sacrifice to a tree and ask for protection. The spirit of Adam does not depart the earth. It dwells with man. For this reason it is erroneous to pray that the thief in the family should die in order that peace may prevail. When he does, the spirit will multiply and millions of such spirit will fill the whole world. Same thing happens with a wizard. Such spirit will multiply and fill the earth. When one says you have a spirit, which spirit do you have? Is it the Adamic spirit which is lustful and which conceives no good thought? The spirit is life, the breath of life. The Adamic spirit does not think about any other thing than earthly. He thinks about and dreams of the things of this world. Its wisdom and everything is consumed with material and sensual things. Do not forget about the relative positions of man and God. God made man in his own image and after his own likeness. Our Lord Jesus Christ is Son of Man, the Son of God and God. Since God came in person, that was why during the three days death, he became spirit and multiplied throughout the entire world. You will note one wonderful thing I am now going to reveal to you. It is said, except a corn of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it abideth alone, but if it dies, it bringeth forth much fruit. People rejoiced in the killings of the apostles of God like Peter, James and others. They thought that such persons had been eliminated. But such was the will of God, because the more they killed, the more the spirit of the children of God multiplied and spread. On killing one person, he turned into a multiple of spirits, and filled the earth. God deliberately caused it, because that was the way to spread them. More so, it was made known, that the forbidden fruit was the fruit of good and evil that Adam and Eve did eat. When Eve was pregnant, she gave birth to twins, male and female. During the next conception, she gave birth also to another pair, male and female. The first birth was Cain and a woman. Cain came from the earth. The second birth was Abel and a woman. Abel was from heaven. Note that already Adam was an earthly spirit, who took to worldly things. If Abel, who was heavenly continued to live, there would not have emanated any child of God, no spirit of God would have been found on earth. There was no other way through which the heavenly spirit would have multiplied, except through the death of Abel. As there would be no other way to bring in more Adam-like people, if Adam did not have the deep sleep. Brethren, it is therefore erroneous to attribute any occurrences to any person. We often blame Cain for killing his brother. Cain killed nobody. It was all the plan of God, because that is the only way through which he brings in such spirits into the world. That is, why it is said that only the kin knows the secret of his kingdom. This gospel should not be given to you, but I do not even understand why I am doing it. You can now realize that Adam is spirit, Eve is spirit, Cain is spirit, Abel is spirit. But what type of spirit do you find in each of them? Right now, you can beget children, the first coming from the spirit and the second of the flesh. This is also illustrated by the case of Esau and Jacob, Isaac and Ishmael. 
the two spirits abound in the world and that is why they do not see eye to eye. Abel was a shepherd, while Cain was a farmer. When God demanded a sacrifice of thanks from them, Abel wholeheartedly used the fattest of his rams for the sacrifice. But upon the nice and big lands Cain harvested, he concluded that God needed nothing other than the heart. He used a lean piece of lamb which had been well eaten by beetles for the sacrifice. Right from that time, even as God had said that it was the tree of good and evil, we are now in two natures. There are the children of God and also the flesh, all of them come from the Father, and are one brethren. Those who are from the earth remain here, they go nowhere. As people do pray God to take away a thief, or a murderer, or such and such a person, to where are they to be taken? They are all earthbound moving from one family to another. Except for, now that he has decided and has come by himself to regenerate, he is the only one to approve what he has not planted, Matthew chapter 15 verse 13. This explains why this is a very critical period. All spirits are now struggling for salvation, because they know what is going to happen. The fact is hidden to you and many others. You may find in one family somebody who does not love diabolical things, believes in God, has the fear of God, tells truth and was so born, while others in the family prepare concoction, and live abominable lives according to their wishes, without joining them. Many things have happened to men which should cause them to conclude that there is no God in existence. If such things do not happen, through what channel will the children of God, that spirit, come? That is why, when such spirits are not kind, benevolent, truthful, they cannot find peace. If they do not share the little they have with other people, they are in trouble. They are hearing the voice of God, they are seeing God. On the other hand, those born of flesh, no matter what you do, if they do not commit sin, they are never satisfied. At times they ask themselves, why they are not satisfied with what they have. They ask themselves, why they kill people, or do those things. They ask what actually goes wrong with them. They cannot help it, because they are from the earth. They have to behave in a way reminiscent of their origin, even as the earth is not without particles. It is the elementary spirit that does all the evil things. If you are of the spirit which comes from God, if you decide on your own that you will no longer do good but will continue in evil, you will right from that day do more good things than you used to. You are not the one doing so, but the spirit in you. Can you see how the wisdom of God deludes man? You will recall that. When he had opened the fifth seal, under the altar were the souls of them that were slain for the word of God, and for the testimony which they held. They cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? White robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them, that they should rest yet for a little season, until their fellow servants also and their brethren, that should be killed, as they were, should be fulfilled. Revelation chapter 6 verses 9 to 11. The 144,000, we are told of, are the number of saints that would be killed, because he had said, as was done unto me, so will be done to you. A messenger is not greater than the master. Matthew chapter 10 verse 24. That number must pass through the same ordeal. When these things come to pass, people ask why a man of God should suffer, lack what to eat, or be killed. The landlord knows the nooks and corners of his house. He knows what he is doing and the knowledge is hidden from us and all the inhabitants of the world. It is for this reason that it is said that the 144,000 were those redeemed from the earth. When one of the elders said, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? John said unto him, Sir thou knowest. And he said to John, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Revelation chapter 7 verses 13 and 14. There is a spiritual course which says, we of the past generation, are still now. We are still those of the past generations. Let our first lesson be read. First Bible lesson, John chapter 3 verse 6. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Can you see the two natures of man? Marvel not about what you have seen day by day. As we are here, no matter the population, we are of dual nature. You will find somebody amongst us who will be receptive to whatever you preach and still maintains his talisman in his pocket and other protective charms. He preaches the gospel of self-help even, as God helps you. Also, he drinks and does other abominable acts. No matter what you tell him, he will not believe. 
But on the other hand, you will also find somebody who has not touched any liquor from birth. He detests fornication, disbelieves in concoction, and horse feeling. He holds to these as his exceptional ways of life, and apart from believing in God sincerely in his heart, shows forth by his deeds. He neither believes in nor initiates in any sacred society. But no one can also harm him in any way. For this reason others refer to him as wizard and juju. This results from the spirit in him, out of which he is born. He is a born leader, because, wherever he goes, it is that spirit which leads. For this reason people complain that they do not know where he had his brand of witchcraft. He does not himself comprehend the phenomenon operating round about him. He possesses no form of protection. He has no problems, wherever he goes. If you think evil of him, problems will befall you. He shows the expression of love and cannot commit sin. He comprehends not the how and why of things around him. Except, now that I am telling you that the realization will get to him. He may be born into a village where there is no church, where no one has ever learned of God. But through him, others may come to learn God's virtues, and the worship of God may spread through him and without his being taught by any person. This way of life is not acquired or exhibited by him. It is that spirit in him which does all the work. There is no person who does not know God and will not want to serve him. But it all depends on the nature of spirits, whether you are born of flesh or of spirit. That is the major problem point this work is done by the spirit and you cannot change it. You will recall, when Paul said, for the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Now, if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Romans chapter 7 verses 19 and 20. In the same token, those of us who put on this white raiment are desirous to practice the word of God but we find ourselves doing things contrary to the teachings we receive. It is no more you that do it, but that spirit, the flesh dwelling in you. Many people think that the Holy Spirit belongs to every person. That is not true. The Holy Spirit is especially reserved for the number of persons throughout the world in whom the Holy Spirit must dwell. These are those whose sins are not imputed, because they are begotten of God right from the beginning. You are witnesses to the fact that, if your relation is not at Lagos or London, you cannot travel to such places for a visit. Whom will you visit there? Except, where your child is, there will you want to visit. It is for this reason that our Lord Jesus Christ says, You do not believe in me, because you are not my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. John chapter 10 verse 27. You cannot practice the word of God, because you are not the child of God. The children of God alone hear and practice the word of God. As we are here, when you proclaim that God is here on earth, a man of the world will flare up and seek for proof, and may even want to fight you. Do not fight, since he is a man of the world, he speaks like a man of the world and the people of the world listen to him. When reference is made to the flesh, it is not the human body, but rather to the spirit which dwells in the human body. Why it is called the flesh is that it is not the lord of the spirits but is an ordinary spirit which abounds here. Just as you gather here, there are different forms of spirits. Indeed they are many. All angels are spirits. Trees are spirits. Human beings, animals, water and every other creature constitute the spirit. But only one spirit fathers all. All other spirits are products of the one spirit. That is to say there is the Lord of all spirits to whom all other spirits must bow down to worship. What makes the world to now ask us why other church denominations, native doctors, miracle workers and others abound, but brotherhood still emerges invincible? They wonder and ask through what medium the achievements are made, since they have never seen such before. For this reason, they are gripped with fear and know not any manner of escape. Visit all the libraries in the world, read through the pages of various volumes, whether you will come by any publication concerning brotherhood. There is no book on brotherhood and what is in it. No man has ever perceived. The wisdom of the world is limited. The ears have never heard, and thoughts have not been focused. It is to all of us, as if in a dream. This is so, because the one operating is the father of all the spirits. He rules over everything and all things come down from heaven. He has taken away reasoning, wisdom and every aspect of imagination. All things are under his feet. It is not flesh and blood. It is the creative spirit. He created the heavens and the earth. Man and all other creatures come from him. 
He has come and resumed his glory. This spirit has never been here on earth. But this is his reign. That is, why it is called God's kingdom. There is no other reign. It was not requested, it does not come as a result of prayers. No person asks any questions. It is for all of us to prostrate on the ground. The various questions we raise are grossly unnecessary. What do we have to ask? You have heard how the father and the mother of our Lord Jesus Christ took him to the temple to be blessed when he was young. Luke chapter 2 verse 22. At about the age of 30, he went to John and was baptized and he received the Holy Spirit. Matthew chapter 3 verse 15. You have heard that he moved from place to place to the temple, India and other places teaching the people. But it is not so with this spirit. He had said, I go unto the Father, because the Father is greater than I. John chapter 14 verse 28. Consider the truth of this. He said, The Comforter, even the Holy Spirit, that the Father will send in my name, shall teach you all things and also bring to your remembrance all things whatsoever that I had commanded you. John chapter 14 verse 26. In another place, he says, Call no one teacher, Matthew chapter 23 verses 8 to 10, I am the only teacher. But here, he says that, when the Comforter shall come, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Can you not deduce that one is greater than the other? Do not be deceived by the human framework. As you are, you are an empty building. It is the spirit that avails what you find. When it is complained that somebody suffers from leprosy, it is the spirit. When a person is lame, it is the spirit. When a person commits fornication, it is the spirit. When a person steals, it is the spirit. The body is empty. Remember, when he said, Upon this rock will I build my temple, Matthew chapter 16 verse 18, that is, when the self-same spirit enters into you. The number of spirits in you are uncountable. That is why, at certain times, when you dream, you see a large city and a great number of people. All these are the spirits in you. The various spirits live in you, because you are God's building, God's city and his husbandry. Right now, about three quarters of the total surface area of the earth is covered with water. Above the skies and beneath the earth are also full of water. Similarly, water forms the greater proportion of the human blood. If water rushes out of your body, it can fill a reasonably large container. When your body is depleted of water, you cannot live any longer. If the actual blood in you is drained, that is your end. When complaints are made that a person has faded away, it is the reduction of water and blood. Can you see the magnitude of the wisdom of God? The spirit reigns. Your coming is predetermined by the nature of the spirit. The spirit comes first. Water and blood are component parts to make a human being but the spirit is the ruler. It is said that in the beginning, the spirit of God was upon the waters. Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. The words you speak are given by the spirit. When you walk, it is the spirit that does it. But the spirit which is not the head, the Adamic spirit, is blind, deaf, without intelligence or initiative but is all the time carnally minded. That is the kind of spirit you operate with. I often hear some people say that they do not require any spiritual matter. If you do not require things spiritual, who is the one speaking in you? Is it not the spirit? Whence came you? From the spirit? Are you not from the spiritual realm? Where do you return to? Is it not the same spiritual realm? About three quarters of your body is spirit. When you do anything injurious to the spirit you are gone. Know you not that all things are spirit? Even madness is spirit. None of us here has ever known what Abraham looked like, except in the spirit God you see Abraham, Isaac, John the Baptist and Elijah. Our Lord Jesus Christ and his disciples are here present. Moses is here, other patriarchs are here but not in the flesh can they be seen. What is the component of the flesh after all? Is it not water? When it is poured out, what can you do? When you are in spirit you abide forever. As you are now, you are in spirit. Wherever you go, you are in spirit. Let our second lesson be read. This lesson is greater than all the inhabitants of the world but I cannot understand why it is given to you. It can be likened to presenting a mirror to a blind man. Second Bible lesson, Luke chapter 1 verse 17. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Have you heard that? 
When John the Baptist was not yet born, the angel told Zacharias of John informing him that he, John, shall go before him, Jesus the Christ, in the spirit and power of Elias. Against this background, stealing is not learned, fornication is not learned. When the spirit of fornication, or stealing, or murder, falsehood comes down, it will do its assignment. You cannot influence, you have no control over, you have no idea about, any of the things done. It is the spirit that does whatever it wishes, except the father alone who controls all these things. He alone knows about them and their modus operandi. You can deduce that, since you are a spirit, you have your own nature. If you originate from the Adamic spirit, you will behave like Adam. If you originate from the spirit that comes from heaven, that is, the spirit of the children of God, right from your birth, you will be a child of God. Why is it then that upon the gospels preached to you, you bother yourself about what to eat, and what to put on, and what to drink? Upon the gospels preached to you day and night, you will not hear. Is it not the spirit in you that is at work? The name, John the Baptist, the color of his skin, are immaterial. What matters is the nature of his spirit. His father, Zacharias, had never baptized any person with water and did not know about baptism by water. Who taught John how to baptize with water? Who taught him how to fast? Who taught him that somebody should do confession before baptism? Who taught John all the things he did? It was that spirit in him. People assert that somebody resembles either his mother or father. Whom did John resemble? Did he resemble Zacharias or Elizabeth? Have you ever heard that there is any man who does not eat but feeds on locust beans and wild honey only? He did not marry. He did not do any other thing throughout his life. He rather went about in the desert, preaching. Do you know that Elijah is one of the angels? When reference was made of Elijah, it is that self-same spirit with which John the Baptist came. Brethren, whatever happens, if you hold the flesh responsible, you are mistaken. There is nothing in this human frame. It is the spirit that causes trouble. The spirit also brings about peace. The spirit is the sole operator and accomplisher. That is why all the while we have tried on our own to make arrangements, have you found any headway? Except the father who owns and rules over all the spirits, gives the command, then can there be peace. It had been written, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Malachi chapter 4 verse 5. For this reason, people gazed at the sky, studying his facial appearance from his photograph they had at home, their contention was that, since he was translated, he will have to come down from the blues. What about the spirit of John the Baptist? Was it not Elijah? Matthew chapter 11 verse 14. When he came, it was the spirit that did all the work. He was not directed or advised by any person. No person taught him what to do. He needed no formal orientation. Why could no other person recognize John the Baptist, as the one who had come in the spirit of Elijah, except our Lord Jesus Christ? It was, because our Lord Jesus Christ is the head and controller of the spirit. If you are a member of the House of Parliament, or House of Lords, or Federal House or Senate, it means you will be able to recognize those in that assembly. That was why our Lord Jesus Christ recognized John the Baptist and John also recognized him. The writings right from Genesis to Revelation are spiritual languages. Flesh and blood cannot understand anything. Since it is a spiritual language, it is the spirit that understands. How was it that our Lord Jesus Christ lived for 33 years but no person in Israel could recognize him? Neither his mother nor father knew him, except John the Baptist. John said of him, I indeed baptize you with water unto a repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear, he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost, and with fire. Luke chapter 3 verse 16. Do you know, that we know no man after the flesh? 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 16. There is no person who is known by the flesh. All of you are known in the spirit. Abraham is here. The spirit of Abraham, Isaac, John, Lucifer, and others are all here. Your actions are spiritually oriented, because there is no man. Man is like the dew. Our luck is the coming of the Holy Spirit to open our eyes. Because, when John says of Jesus, he was before me, people begin to wonder that John was older than our Lord Jesus Christ by six months in this physical plane. They will question the authenticity of John's claim, that our Lord Jesus Christ, born six months later, was older than him. 
It looked ridiculous and strange to them but that is a spiritual language. In another instance, when our Lord Jesus Christ said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, before Abraham was, I am, they took up stones to cast at him, rent their garments to emphasize their belief. Is it not already said that you are mad? What day were you born? You are not even up to 50 years but you claim to have been before Abraham. John chapter 8 verse 58. It is a spiritual language. He was referring to the spirit. That was why he sometimes said, my kingdom is not of this world. John chapter 18 verse 36. All his statements were spiritual, since he is that spirit, the Lord and ruler of other spirits. Right now, you can have a certain spirit sent to you which is mightier than you and had existed before you. But with pride of age, you will call him your child. He will regard it as insulting. You will feel that from his attitude, the child is the one who insults. The children of these days regard you with ignominy. At times, if you share something, he will want to know why he is not given the bigger share when he is mightier than you. You will begin to feel that he speaks as a child since he is a child. But he is an elderly man. Listen to the word of God because it is a spiritual language. There is a child you beat up and you are in trouble. There is a child you will abuse and the consequences will be hard on you. Do you remember what our Lord Jesus Christ said to his disciples? Did I not choose twelve of you and one is a devil? John chapter 6 verse 70. Who was the devil? It was Judas Iscariot. He was born a demon and operated with the devil right from birth. His human body frame was not the demon per se but the spirit in him was. The spirit came to accomplish a specific assignment. The father sent that spirit for that assignment. Flesh and blood could not do the work. You think that it was the flesh and blood that made up Judas Iscariot which did that work. He was a treasurer and there was always much money with him. He was always present to discuss financial issues when the need arose. Our Lord Jesus Christ loved him dearly. What would have prompted Judas to betray him? Judas was not responsible but the spirit in him did the work. Do you not see the later happenings? When Judas saw that our Lord Jesus Christ was condemned and liable to die, he threw the silver back to them. The elders and the chief priests refused to collect the money. That shows to you that Judas was not responsible for his action. It was the evil spirit in him that did the work. Brethren, I do not want to take you further. Let our golden text be read unto you. Golden text, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 45. And so it is written, the first man Adam was made a living soul, the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. Have you heard that? Have you seen what I mean, that whatever comes from the flesh is of the flesh? Adam came from the flesh. His spirit was carnal. All about him was carnal. That is why all those from him are carnal. But Jesus the Christ is the spirit that comes from heaven. All those who come from heaven have that self-same spirit. If Adam should tell you that he understands whatever he does, he deceives you. He knows nothing. If Cain or Abel should tell you that he is conscious of what he had done, he deceives you. It is the spirit that does everything. Everything is spiritually done. God is a spirit. The angels are spirits. All things are done by the spirit. No person is capable of doing anything. We remain this way. Abraham, Isaac remain the same way knowing neither left nor right. God alone does his work throughout the whole world. Because of that spirit, you accuse your father of being a wizard and your mother of being a witch. You complain of your father bewitching your child. You also accuse your brother of doing one thing or the other. These are misconceptions. It is that spirit at work. You now profess to possess the Holy Spirit. Where is the Holy Spirit that you possess? Is it that Adamic spirit? You have to be quickened that is why it is said, as you had borne the image of the earthly man, so must you bear the image of the heavenly man. Right now, except you have the Holy Spirit, which is the image of the heavenly man, you cannot have eternal life. Why is it that throughout all the world, there is no person who believes in God? There is no person who knows God. Point. There is no one who resembles him. It is because of the Adamic spirit which abounds on earth. When it is said, whoever does not hate his father, mother, brothers, Luke chapter 14 verse 26, sisters, yea, and his own life also, cannot inherit the kingdom of God, one will begin to wonder and complain. What did I come for? I came to pray for my mother. I came to save my life. 
I cannot accept such proposition. Do you not count it as witchcraft when it is said, pray not for money, or child, or life and you begin to question, what did I come for? I want a male child. I want a wife. I want money, because I would like to be a millionaire. Who speaks like this? Is it not Adam? Heaven and earth belong to God. The earth and its fullness belong to God. Whatever he owns belongs to his children. Why do you complain that you have no relation? Why do you complain of being in need? Why are you afraid? Why is your heart troubled? Why do you bother about what to eat? Why do you not surrender yourself to him? Why have you not seen this God? Throughout the length and breadth of the world, can there be found any man or group of persons who operate without charms, indulgence in the preparation of concoction, amulets, apart from the expression of oneness in brotherhood? Where else in the world can you find it? There is no one. All the world today suspect that there is power in brotherhood which is not from God. But it had been recorded in Isaiah, chapter 2 that God will reign. Charms will be subdued. Concoctions shall run into holes, and to the rocks and God shall march on the earth, as he loves. All the rulers of the earth shall fall, and he shall be exalted above all else. Nations shall not lift up sword against nation. He shall teach them his ways. He shall teach them love, truth, humility, joy and all good things. Are you not witnesses to this? But many of you here in brotherhood are in possession of swords, guns, and other weapons to guard against the breaking in of thieves. You will argue, the leader speaks in his own characteristic manner. He does not know the demands of the society. I have protected myself. Will the automatic pistol or the pistol you have in your pocket protect you? Why do you do this? It is because of that spirit of Adam in you. Have you not heard that, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it, except the Lord keep the city, the watchmen watch but in vain? Psalms chapter 127 verse 1. If you were to believe in God, you would have no problems. You would not have a sleepless night. You would not bother about what to eat. You will have no plans for yourself. There is nothing to plan. So long as you believe, you are free. Can you now realize why our Lord Jesus Christ says, Except ye be born of water and of spirit, you cannot enter into the kingdom of God. John chapter 3 verse 5. And as you had borne the image of the earthy, you shall all bear the image of the heavenly. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 49. The Lord Jesus Christ is here. The flesh is here. When the spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ infuses into the flesh, the flesh will vanish and you will have harmony and concord. When you say that one of your consciences tells you to steal and the other tells you not to steal, it is no conscience. It is the spirit of Adam that tells you to steal. The spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ tells you not to steal. That is why he also says, I use the Holy Spirit to cast away the evil spirit from you and the Holy Spirit takes dominion. It is against this base that it is said that the kingdoms of this world are become the kingdom of Jehovah God and his Christ. Revelation chapter 11 verse 15. Consequently, you are now in the kingdom of God. This subsumes the presence of the soul spiritual head and the father of all the spirits. It is not a human being that answers the soul spiritual head. It is the name of the spirit. It is the name of the spirit that now is and does not refer to me that you see. There is somebody here, whom you have neither seen nor known. Ponder over the situation that a strong man like you, an impervious rock like you, hard and impregnable, you who fear neither governors nor guns, nor presidents, nor anything for that matter, but look at how you are now subjected to nothingness. Do you argue that such a feat is achieved by a human being? When Satan fights against himself, his kingdom faces desolation. But if I use the Spirit of God to cast away the spirit of this world, you will become possessed of the Spirit of God. It is exactly the situation that abounds today. The spirit that now dwells in you teaches you to do that which is good. If you are reviled for the sake of Christ, know that the spirit of God and the spirit of glory is upon you. That is why it is said, except a man is born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. John chapter 3 verse 5. If you do not have this spirit you abide in the flesh. This spirit has to subdue all flesh and elementary spirits and take dominion and raise up this hand of authority. There and then will peace ensue. Nobody is responsible for anything he does. Do not hang or disgrace any person. It is a spiritual warfare that is on. 
It is on this basis that, when they come here, and the Spirit of God is used in casting them away, they will depart and the Holy Spirit will reign over you. Love every person. This war is in no way against flesh and blood. Paul had said that this war is not against flesh and blood but against principalities and the powers of this earth, and the powers from high places. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. Have you not seen the case of Judas Iscariot? While they were dining, Satan threw the thought into him. He did not even know till that thought was thrown into his heart. All evil thoughts are from the evil one. The thought of stealing, fornication, drinking, killings, falsehood come from the evil one. That is the work of the evil one. For this reason, since the world started, flesh and blood is lifeless. The Adamic spirit cannot do anything good, because it is ignorant, blind, deaf, stupid, and non-existent. In this wise, do not complain that you no longer require anything spiritual. What do you mean by spiritual things? Are killings not done by the spirit? Are stealing not done by the spirit? Is the acquisition of wealth not spirit? Is drinking not spirit? Is the life we live not spirit? There is no other thing apart from the spirit. It is the spirit that rules heaven and earth and is in absolute control of everything. Why do you go to the hospital and receive treatment but your sickness is not healed? Why do you go to a native doctor, yet your sickness continues? But on speaking the word, you are healed. It is, because it is a spirit. Your problems cause you to drink various types of concoction and inject black powder into your body. What do you think happens to you? There is nothing apart from the work of the spirit. Whosoever shall obey the commandments of God has no problem. That is, why you have to show others the virtues of God in you. No matter your faith or baptism, it does not matter. The sleep we sleep is spirit. Falsehood, fornication, sicknesses and all that befalls us is spirit. Our duty therefore is to drive away the evil spirit with the Holy Spirit, so that the Holy Spirit can dwell in us. Have you ever been excommunicated or demoted, or disgraced? What obtains here is quite unlike what obtains in the world. Brethren, I will not be tedious unto you. A stroke of the cane is sufficient unto the wise. He who has ears, let him hear. May God bless his holy words. Amen. Thank you, Father, 